Hey, good morning class. Um, so we are getting really close to the end of the year now. So that means that um, we actually have come to the end of our, um, our Bible lessons. Um, so we're gonna change it up a little bit and do something a little bit different. Um, so for Bible um, this week, I'm going to just read you some, uh, some stories that are not um, found in the Bible. They're make-believe stories, um, but they're based on a truth from the Bible. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that, um, uh, about each book. And then what I'll do is just like I do in class, I'll read um, a page to you and then I'll try to turn the book for a second just so you can um, take a look at the picture for a minute, okay? So today our story is by Max Licato. He's the author. Remember the author is the person that writes the book. And today's book is called Jacob's Gift. Now, Jesus, um, I think Mary and Joseph will be in this book, and those are uh, real people from the Bible. But Jacob is a make-believe character, and he is kind of put into this story that we'll read just to, uh, just to um, teach us a biblical truth. So here is the, the Bible scripture that we're going to use for, um, for this story. It says in 1 Peter 4.10 in the Bible, it says, As each has received a gift... Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very various grace. So God has given all of us special gifts and talents. Um, you know, some of us, it's or some of it's teaching. Some of you are really good at singing. Some of you maybe are really good at building things. Uh, you may be really good at math. You might be uh, find that when you get older, you get you you're really good at uh, teaching people, um, telling people about the good news of of Jesus. And so every person that God created has been given a gift or a talent. And the Bible says that we are to use that gift or talent um, to serve God and to serve others. So that's what Jacob's going to do in this story. Um, and so let's find out exactly what Jacob does and what um, his gift from God is and how he used it. Okay? Jacob's gift. Rabbi Simeon brushed the sawdust off his hands and began untying his apron. Before you leave today, I have a special announcement. He hung the apron on a wooden peg and turned to look at the handful of boys in his shop. All but one apprentice had removed their aprons and put away their toys, uh, their tools. Rabbi Simeon looked across the workshop. One boy continued sawing a piece of wood. Jacob, the rabbi instructed, our work is finished for the day. Put away your tools. Jacob didn't respond. The only sound he heard was the swish, swish of the saw. And now swish, swish was the only one anyone heard. But Jacob didn't know that. The other boys in the shop began to snicker. See, there's Jacob and he's sawing back and forth. Rabbi Simeon let out a deep sigh and shook his head, but he wasn't mad. Deep down, he was pleased. He too knew that it was like what it was like to get lost in the world of woodworking. But it was time to go home. Jacob, the rabbi called again, his voice a bit louder this time. The sawing stopped. When Jacob heard no other noise, he knew he'd done it again. Slowly, he placed his saw on the table. I'm sorry, rabbi, he said softly. Rabbi Simeon smiled. It's all right. Put away your tools and hang up your apron. So there's the rabbi. Rabbi means teacher. And then here's Jacob. Jacob quickly cleaned off his work area. With a sigh, he stood and walked across the room, never looking up. This was the part he hated most. Everyone was looking at him. He hung up his apron as the other boys continued to snicker or make fun of him. Jacob's cheeks burned. And finally, the rabbi spoke, and all eyes turned back to him. As I said earlier, my nephew from Nazareth should be here within a few days. He is a master carpenter who knows quality work. He will help me select one of you for a special task. The one who builds the best project, project will work with me in the new synagogue. It will be me. The words were so strong in Jacob's thoughts, he feared that he had spoken them out loud. 
Only days earlier, he'd overheard the rabbi say, just leave Jacob alone with wood and he can do almost anything. Jacob had turned red then too, but that time with pride. I just have to be chosen, Jacob determined. I want to use my hands to help build God's house. It doesn't matter that everyone says I'm so shy. This time, Jacob, Jacob, did you hear what I said? Um, no, sir. I'll be away for the next three days, but you may all use the workshop to finish your projects. As the others began to leave, the rabbi asked Jacob to stay. Again, Jacob felt his cheeks warm. He waited until everyone had left and then approached the carpenter. I'm sorry, Rabbi, he apologized. apologized. I'll do better next time. The rabbi motioned for Jacob to sit on one of the stools. Oh, Jacob, you've done nothing wrong. I asked you to stay so I could tell you something. The rabbi smiled, pulled up a stool, and sat down. He placed his big hand on Jacob's shoulder and began, God has given you a gift of woodworking. What is difficult for so many is easy for you. Surely you've noticed. Jacob nodded slowly. He had wondered why other boys struggled with the wood to make things that seemed so simple to him. God gives gifts, Jacob. Jacob, some can sing and others can teach. And you, you can build. You have a special gift. Have you ever wondered why God gave you this gift? Um, so I can learn to be a good carpenter, he guessed. Well, the rabbi chuckled, not exactly. God gave you the gift to share with others. Let's say you gave a present to one of my daughters. How do you think that that would make me feel? Happy, Jacob asked. Of course, even though you gave the gift to my child, I would feel like you had given it to me. God is like that too. If you ever have a chance to help somebody, remember what I told you. Now run home and tell your father that I hope he has an inn full of guests next week. That evening uh, at supper, Jacob's father reminded him of the days of ahead. We're expecting a lot of business, son. I'll get up early, promised Jacob. I will work on my project in the mornings and help you in the evenings. The next three mornings, Jacob crawled out of bed while it was still dark and went to the workshop. With a fire going and a lamp burning, he worked hard to complete his project. The other boys had laughed when he told them that he was going, um, what he was going to build, but now that it was almost finished, they weren't laughing anymore. Jacob was building a new kind of animal feed trough. He would have, his would have wheels. He got the idea while watching some men work in the stable next to his father's inn. They loaded a wagon full of hay rolled it into the shed and dumped it in the trough. He thought, why not put wheels on the trough? And that's what Jacob was planning to do. Jacob had returned to the workshop after helping his father at the inn. Rabbi Simeon will be here tomorrow. I must finish tonight, thought the sleepy boy. Jacob looked at the trough and then at the four wheels piled on the workbench. So much work to still do. He was so tired. Maybe if I just close my eyes for a few minutes. In what seemed like the very next moment, a beam of starlight slipped through a crack and fell across Jacob's napping eyes. What, he shouted, startled by the sudden light. Had he slept through the night? Then he looked out and saw the village showered by a gleaming, shimmering light in the night. Jacob rubbed the sleep from his eyes and he walked outside toward the star that seemed to dance in the sky near his father's end. Then he heard a strange sound in the stable behind the inn. Quietly, Jacob crept closer. He looked through a knot hole in the stable wall, and there, in a tiny nest of straw on the ground, was a baby. Beside the baby knelt his mother. A man gently covered her with his cloak. The baby must be uncomfortable on the ground, Jacob thought.
Quickly, Jacob turned and raced back to the workshop. He stood beside his newly built feed trough. He had measured each board so carefully. He had cut each piece with skill. He had oiled it with care. It was the best work Jacob had ever done. Tomorrow, the rabbi, <coughs> excuse me, tomorrow the rabbi would select the best apprentice. But tonight, there's a new baby without a place to sleep. Good morning, boys, said Rabbi Simeon. This is the big day. Jacob approached the rabbi. Uh, sir, um, I need to tell you something. Later, um, later, Jacob, we need to get everything ready for my nephew. Here, help me. The rabbi's voice drifted off as he began to take the projects outside as unfin an unfinished chair, a desk with one leg too short, and a wobbly stool. Then looking at a stack of four wheels, he asked, where is your project, Jacob? Uh, that's what I tried to tell you. Something happened. There was this big star and... Uncle Simeon! Joseph! Simeon shouted, extending his arms. I'm so glad you're here. Jacob's eyes widened. This was the man he had seen with the baby inside the stable the night before. With one arm still around Joseph, the rabbi turned to Jacob. Jacob, this is my nephew from Nazareth. Jacob was too surprised to speak. So Joseph spoke in his place. We've already met, said Joseph, putting a hand on the boy's shoulder. In fact, Jacob gave my newborn son his very first gift. Your son, the rabbi inquired. What son? Where is he? Come and I'll show you. And the rabbi and Jacob hurried behind Joseph. Joseph led them around a curve and down a hill toward the end. Did you stay at the end, Joseph? Not quite. It was too full, Joseph smiled. Then where did you say, stay? asked Rabbi Simeon. You'll see. Joseph led them past the end to the bottom of the hill, and there he left the path and turned toward a shelter. The stable? Simeon asked. You kept your baby in a... Joseph smiled and placed a finger over his lips. Shh. Quiet, uncle. There is sleep. Follow me. He lowered his head and entered the stable. A cow mooed at the presence of the trio. Joseph stepped next to the trough and motioned for them to approach. When the rabbi and his student looked inside, they saw a beautiful newborn baby. So here's um, Joseph and Simeon and Jacob. Okay, they saw a beautiful newborn baby. His name is Jesus, Joseph whispered whispered, and he has a cradle fit for a king. Joseph's kindness made Jacob's cheeks turn red, but he felt so good seeing the baby asleep in the feed trough that he had made. Now I see why your, pro what, why your project was missing, said the rabbi, and it is the finest project I've ever seen. You will be the one to help God build God's house. But tell me, why did you decide to give your feed trough away? Jacob smiled with delight. I remember what you said, Rabbi. When you give a gift to one of God's children, you give a gift to God, said the boy. And the rabbi's voice was soft. And so you have, my son. So you have. Okay, so I want to um, make sure that you understand that this is not a Bible story. Um, Joseph was real and Jesus was real and Mary was real. Um, but this story about Jacob is just a story about what could have happened. Um, but the point of the story is um, to illustrate or to show a, a point, a, a truth from the Bible. And that truth is that God, like we talked about before the book, God has blessed every person with a special gift or a special talent, and maybe you don't know what it is yet. Maybe you do. Maybe some of you, God will show you later on in life. Um, but the Bible tells us, talks about spiritual gifts um, and talents a lot. And uh, the Bible tells us that when God has gifted you for something, it is to bless other people with. It's because he wants you to use that for good. Just like Jacob did in the story. Jacob had a gift for building things. 
And he used that to bless, in our story, Jesus. He used his gift to bless or help somebody else. And so let me read that scripture again to you. It's, it, um, this is from the Bible. It's found in 1 Peter 4.10. As each has received a gift, that means all of you have received some kind of gift or talent, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's various grace. All right, guys, I love you and thank you. And if you have any questions about that story, you um, can feel free to, to call me or talk to mom and dad about it, okay? All right, guys, uh, let me pray for us real quick and close this out. Jesus, I just thank you that um, you are so good to us. And Father God, I'm so grateful that when you created us, you put pieces of yourself in us, um, talents that you uh, made us all different. Um, because you knew that we would all work together to bring you glory. You gave us all special gifts and talents, and they're all different from each other, but they're all used to help people and to bring you glory. And I'm so grateful for that, God. And I, I pray that um, you would help these students to be able to figure out what their gift is, what you have given them, Lord, that's special about them, and that you would help them to be able to use that to help other people. Um, and to bring you honor and glory and to make you smile, Jesus. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.